Exposure to big bumps and small vibrations accumulate fatigue in any long distance cyclist, and fatigue is our enemy. It's been shown that exposure to vibrations tires both the body and the mind. We even have a condition named after us, cyclist palsy or handlebar palsy, which highlights the physical damage that we commonly inflict on our hands and has been studied in long distance cyclists in particular. Causes include exposure to vibration and too much pressure on the hands, including poor fit. This can all be made worse by general fatigue, which is a really common experience for any ultra distance cyclist. Traditionally, insulation from road vibrations have mostly been done by the tires, and to some extent, things like uh, touch point padding and deflection in the seat post. Cycling About did an excellent video explainer about it over here. But tire choice and pressure tuned for performance on the road is kind of rough, and it doesn't really dampen obstacles like speed bumps or potholes really well. Efficiency can be sacrificed for comfort with wide soft tires, but more effort Calories, intensity, and less sleep are the last thing we want on ultra-distance rides. Minimalist suspension add-ons like stems and seat posts can bridge that gap. With high comfort and optimum tire performance, we can minimize total accumulated fatigue and physical damage on very long rides. I consider these minimalist suspension add-ons so important that all of the bikes in my Endurance Bike Buyer's Guide either allow them to be equipped or they come with similar systems as stock. The German company Vecnum has entered the suspension stem market with their Frequence stem. The significance and selling point of the Frequence is the parallel linkage design with 20 millimeters of positive elastomer travel. Such a design allows for what Vecnum calls geometry neutral suspension travel. The advantage is that handlebars and controls shouldn't tilt like single pivot stems and steering geometry remains unchanged compared to a suspension fork. Another advantage Vecnum claims is that the suspension performs well in all hand positions since the linkage is unaffected by leverage. These qualities could offer a big leap forward in the product category, so let's assess those claims, take it for some rides, and do a scientific test to measure what actual benefit it provides. First though, the basics. The Frequence is priced at 251 euros and US buyers can order them through YouTuber The Bike Sauce for $275. With a discount, I paid the equivalent of 231 US dollars. The claimed weight uh, for the 105 millimeter stem is 299 grams and mine weighs 295 grams. It's made in Germany with AL7075 aluminum and has titanium axles. Since those two metals are really dissimilar on the galvanic scale, I'll report back after long-term use to see if there's any galvanic corrosion over time and with exposure to water and salt. The design offers a plus three degree angle and comes in three possible sizes, 90, 105, and 120 millimeters. Travel is dampened by four elastomers. An exposed hex key bolt offers quick, easy stiffness adjustments. My cables rub the stem as they enter the headset, which will require some adjustments to work out. Pushing down on the bars, it's clear that hand position doesn't affect activation of the suspension. Pushing on aero bars, they remain level two. Some people have reported not really liking the angular design. To me, I think it kind of matches what's going on with my polygon here. And as long as it performs as advertised on the box, I really don't care. So let's ride it around a little bit and see how it performs. The first claim up to test is that Vecnum claims to absorb up to 75% of impacts and vibrations. Of course, up to is a very clever phrase. The frequency delivers on shock absorption. It goes about its job mostly unnoticed too, which is ideal. We'll see to what degree it actually absorbs vibrations later on in the test. Second, the geometry neutral travel touted by Vecnum is really clearly evident in use. The handlebars stay level during impacts, which is quite welcome. Remaining level through travel contributes to how it gets forgotten after it's put on the bike. The biggest benefit of neutral travel to me is when riding aero bars. The aero bars remain at the same angle during suspension travel. This further improves the feeling of control and confidence when compared to a single pivot system. A future video will explore this a little bit more, so make sure to subscribe for that comparison. Third, Vecnum claims that all hand positions will see a significant benefit. The drops in the hoods respond similarly, even on the ends of the drops. It's really nice on descents. The aero bar's position sees full travel at the arm pads and at the grips too, and it's balanced. And that balance feels good and has already altered my aero bar riding style in a really positive way. It looks like Vecnum went three for three for its claims being true. 
I've been developing a testing protocol for all things related to comfort, and I'm finally pretty happy with the consistency of raw data and the level of analysis that can be performed. The Vecnum frequency gets to be the first subject of this test, and will go up against a rigid stem. The short of it is, I write a series of 1.5 kilometer flat loops, controlling body position, cadence, and speed by using only one gear. Cadence, speed, lap times, and power data must align with other runs to be accepted. The loop is a variable surface course that includes speed bumps, harsh surface transitions, smooth tarmac, worn tarmac, and chip seal, and is done at a rendering pace of about 23 kilometers per hour. All turns on the course are right-hand turns to avoid any traffic interference. Acceleration data is measured in meters per second squared, or meters per second per second. It's collected using physics toolbox sensor suite, which measures about 200 times per second and has been validated as suitable and accurate for measuring road roughness. The software outputs CSV data for spreadsheet analysis. A histogram of the data looks like this. Collected data is averaged for a general reading, and then measurements are split into representative buckets that roughly match course conditions. The lowest 50% of acceleration measurements represent smooth tarmac. The next 30% represent worn tarmac. The 15% after that represent chip seal, and the top 5% represent heavy hits like surface transitions and speed bumps. Just like the cycling metrics, accelerometer data buckets must also align with others in the same test run to show test validity. This test was performed at 80 PSI with 29 millimeter measured tires. These are tube type tires with butyl tubes and they're mid-range in quality. I used my stock alloy rims with my Polygon bike and rode in the hood's position the entire time. It was eight degrees Celsius. Tires were allowed to reach ambient temperature before pumping them up with a giant brand floor pump. Vecnum stiffness was set at my personal preference after a while of riding, which is near the middle of the adjustment range. It was nice to be able to accept all of the runs because I had recent surgery on my shoulder and neck area and it fatigues really quickly. All right, with the test done, let's see how the Vecnum performs versus a rigid stem. The Vecnum frequency significantly reduces vibrations on tarmac and is not limited to a gravel use case. Its benefits increase the rougher the roads get and is especially adept at mitigating stingers and hard hits. When comparing the data collected from testing the Vecnum frequency, it performs a bit differently than changes in tire pressure. A 10 PSI drop in tire pressure resulted in a 6% reduction in vibration across all different types of terrain. So a similar benefit was experienced on smooth, a little bit rough, very rough, and big bumps. So should you buy the Vecnum Frequence suspension stem? Uh, I did, I'm really happy that I did, and I think it provides some compelling benefits. First, all hand positions are able to feel significant benefits. And by keeping the handlebar flat during suspension travel, it greatly improves the use of aero bars especially. If you ride long distances, you really need to experience the benefits that these minimalist suspension systems can provide. I'm gonna get some more miles on this, go on some brevets and uh, put it through its paces a little bit more, and then I'll be able to compare it directly to the Redshift shock stop system to see if there are any definitive choices to make or if one system would benefit some riders where another system would benefit others. Well, looking forward to that. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it and see you in the next video.